Hello and welcome back to another edition of the Medicwall plugin. My name is Nathaniel P. Wilkerson and today I am going to be talking a little bit about the new blocking module or tool that I've added to the wall plugin. So this is the toolbar here, um, right here in the middle of the screen. Uh, basically we just have three tools that you can use. One is draw blocking, edit blocking, and of course delete blocking. So let's just go ahead and put that back right down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with just uh, throwing up some walls so that we can test this out. And I'm just going to throw up a couple walls like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and we've got, you know, everything turned on, gypsum, layers, and sheathing, cladding, etc. I'm just going to go ahead and turn those off just so we have a better um, visual of what's going on here. <coughs> and turn off the gypsum as well. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so typically, um, you know, the wall blocking tool would be something you might use to add additional blocking into any wall or panel or roof assembly or anything like that. And again, um, you can as essentially as insert blocking into, you know, any one of these assemblies as well as just a generic assembly, a solid um, that you create. So it doesn't have to be a Medique wall or a Medique uh, roof assembly. But uh, for now, we're just going to go ahead and, and use a, our typical wall assembly. So um, in this sort of case, you know, maybe you want to put, um, you know, some blocking in for some cabinets or something. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, throw just a little construction line up here. I'm going to start it right uh, here and then just go up, let's say, 48 inches. Okay. And, you know, and I don't know, maybe that's not where you need it. Um, but let's just go with that for now. <clears throat> so, first of all, um, you know, you just go ahead and click this, and you'll see the menu pop up. Uh, it's over on my other screen. Let me bring that over. Um, <clears throat> so, the first thing you'll notice is as you mouse over these different walls, they highlight. And, and that basically will tell you which wall panel that you will be actually putting the blocking into. So, what you want to do is just want to... Um, We'll just leave everything as default for now. Let's come over here and let's just say we're going to line it up right there. Okay, and then we want to come across here and pick our next point. So you can see, first of all, that this is centered up on the um, on the block, which is a 2x4. And in this case, we don't want that. So what you can do is you can um, hit your control key, which will toggle the placement of the block. So now you notice it's it's on the edge. And if you keep hitting that control key, you'll notice it keeps bumping it to different locations. So I'm going to kind of just go through them all just so you can see. Uh, toggle through them all. So corner, next corner, other corner, other corner, and then back to the center. So in this case, we're just going to center it right like that. And then I just go ahead and select this next point, And there's my block. And once you've gone ahead and set that positioning, um, you should be able to keep that positioning for the next, you know, consecutive blocks until you decide to change it again. So, like, for instance, we might, you know, have a bunch of <coughs> ones here laid out. Okay, so what you notice is uh, I accidentally hit the shift key. Um, so I've created another hotkey, actually, for this, and what it is, it's the shift key. So, yeah, typically, if you've got a rotation, you want the block to be in, like, let's say, I, mean, I don't know why, but maybe 45 degrees you would have to key it in, hit update, and then go ahead and, and you know, draw it I'm all out, of the, out, of, out of my spot here. Um, you know, then you'd have to go in and go like that, right? Um, <coughs> now, the problem is, is that's kind of clunky because you've got to come over here and key that in, and it just, it's kind of painful. So, by hitting the shift key, you can uh, quickly toggle between 90 degrees and 0 degrees you know, for your rotation. And those are the most common ones, so that's why I've put those uh, on that shift key for a hotkey. Okay, and then when you're done, you know, hit the space bar as usual, and it bumps you out of the tool. So let's go ahead and um, fix that one block. We don't want that like that. So we just go ahead and click the Edit button here, and click that, and now you'll notice everything pops up. And you can set that to 90 degrees. And in fact, that's not the right one. We want zero here. Okay. 
And I'm not sure what exactly happened on this one. Um, let's just go ahead and delete it and we'll redo that one. Uh, typically though, um, oh, so, the, so that's, this is what's happening. When you create a block like this, it is it's basically positioning its center uh, along its center line. So when you do adjust the rotation after the fact, it will not rotate about this point or that point. It'll rotate about the center of the block. So that's why, um, you know, that that is what why we're seeing that. Um, and actually, that's perfectly normal and to be expected, I suppose. But and and there is a way to deal with that too. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and hit Control again. Okay. And, and so, <coughs> you know, let's say that for whatever reason later on you know you you decide that you want to move these blocks like pump bump them up like you know maybe to this line is you know from the center line so you can always um jump into the to the assembly right and when you do that actually this one we accidentally created did we accidentally create that on this layer um Oh, interesting. We ac actually created these blocks um, <laughs> on, in this group, which it actually chose this group. Um, so yeah, so you need to you need to make sure as you're creating these blocks um, that you are uh, placing them in the right, making sure they're going into the right group. See, as we highlight this, we notice that those blocks are actually in there. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hide um, this group here. Let's see if I can do that. Hide that group. Okay. So, so as we create the blocks, it's not going to accidentally put them in the wrong group. So, you know, that's actually a good thing. It's not a bug. It's just, it's just the nature of the beast. So, it's it's actually a good thing that that kind of popped up here. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and get the control key to bump it in. So, you can see as we're doing it, this wall panel is highlighted. Um, and that's what we want because then that tells us these blocks are going into this particular um, group. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, go back to the edit menu. Oh, before we do the edit menu. So right. So let's say now that I wanted to move these around after the fact. Um, and you notice there is no move tool here. Um, there's just an edit tool which will you know allow us to change the different. Uh, sizes and, and such with the block but it won't actually move the block so to move the block yeah, it's very simple all you have to do is just go into the wall assembly itself and use the native tool and you can uh, you know reposition this thing you know wherever you want it doesn't matter um, let's, uh, let's say we move let's just bump that one up like that and the other thing you'll notice too is as uh, when you regen this wall um, the positioning of those blocks within that assembly do not change and they also are retained so they're not deleted so and the and the reason is because the key word in of those uh instances re, uh has this custom keyword in it in the instance name and so that retains that block okay so let's go ahead and edit one of these guys doesn't really matter which <coughs> um you know maybe you want to go with this let's say uh a two by six block instead of a two by four block, right? And again, if you start uh, rotating them and stuff, and then you need to shift the position this way or that, um, like I said, you can always jump in there and move these blocks around at your heart's content. It, there's no, there's no harm in doing that. <coughs> um, and then also, you can also like so basically you have this block length, right? This gives you the ability to actually change that length of the block. So for instance, right now this block is fourteen and a half inches and you know, I don't know, for whatever reason let's put in twelve. Okay, you're no you'll notice that wherever you start the block, that is the start point. So so that information is being retained. And so y you can always, you know, it basically extrude the, or push pull the block out further by adjusting this um, this uh, length. Okay, um, one other last thing. Again, block rotation rotates the block about the center axis of the block. 
And if you ever really want to determine what that center axis is, just click into the blocks group itself, and you'll notice the axes, uh, the blue and the green, and of course the red is passing right through the center. That tells you uh, where that axis is. Um, another item here is the block material. So you'll notice that all of these additional materials are being pulled from the custom material library manager. And so, you know, you can use your own custom materials for the blocks. But I also have some built-in ones here um, that are handy to have. So, for instance, if you want to use pressure-treated lumber, uh, you know, OSB. Uh, got a few kind of cool ones here. Um, let's see, the PSL or LVL one's kind of cool. Um, gives you that ability, you know, so you've got that kind of the edge texturing going on all the way around. In fact, it's on the ends as well. Um, and then also the, the timber one here, um, and it will, you can use it to create additional timbers within your structure. And, and the kind of the cool thing with that texture is, uh, let me get here, we actually are clicked in already. Um, you know, it's got the end texture going on there for your block. So, um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, blocks are fairly straightforward, I guess. There's not really that much to them. But just a handy tool, I think, that can allow you to um, create a little extra pieces of wood within your construction here. And, um, <coughs> you know, if you need to run vertical members, that sort of thing, you can do that. I, I, essentially, I guess you could create additional studs if you need those within your wall panels. And again, those will be retained when you rebuild your wall. And then last but not least, we just have the uh, delete function, and it just allows you to delete blocks that quickly. All right, uh, if you have any questions for me or any additional features you want to see added to this new module, uh, please let me know. Um, it's, you know, right hot off the press. It's just brand new, so I'm sure there are a few items more that I will eventually add to it. Uh, there always is, it seems like, um, but uh, for now it looks like it's working reasonably stable. Again, you can uh, use it within um, any wall assembly, any roof assembly, um, and we'll eventually within the floor assemblies once I have the new uh, floor extension started here and, and up and running. Um, so, yeah, give me a holler if you have any questions or ideas, and I always appreciate you guys' support. Thank you very much.